To install the front speakers, first we need to remove the screw holding the switch panel in place and the screw holding the door handle in place. Once the screw has been removed from the switch panel, you can lift it up, it will pop loose and there are two more screws underneath it. Once these screws have been removed, you can pull the door panel away from the door frame. The white plastic clips shown here will come loose. Then remove the wires holding the electronics onto the door and you can remove the door handle and everything will come free. Now that we've removed the door card, we have easy access to the front speakers. Just undo the three screws on the factory speaker and it will pull loose. Now that the front speaker has been removed from the door, we can see just how tiny the motors are and how crappy the speakers are. Manufacturers always install crappy speakers in the doors because you can't see them. Here's the factory tweeter mount. Our Hertz tweeter will fit in there perfectly. Now we get the mounting ring for the speakers and I am using it to mark out drill holes. Using a sharpie, mark out where you need to drill the holes to mount the speaker to the door frame. Now we can remove the factory mounting clips for the factory speakers, they just push out from behind. Now getting the drill with a one and a half millimeter drill bit, we're going to be drilling the pilot holes for the mounting screws. I like to leave a little bit of meat in the hole so that when you tighten down the self-tapping screws, they can bite into the door frame as well as bite into the mounting clips that are supplied with your speakers. Now that the pilot holes have been drilled, we can attach fasteners for the new speakers. Uh, these are little clips. There is a front side and a back side, so be mindful. The front side just has a hole drilled through it. The back is notched to cause threads for the screws to bite into. When you're putting these little guys onto the door panel, you might find that they're a bit loose. That can be rectified by pinching them and then they'll bite onto the steel a bit harder and they won't slide around. And just make sure that the front hole is lined up with the pilot holes that you've drilled previously. Now we can use the Sharpie to mark out where to cut our sound deadening sheet. Because the corner of the door is rounded, a marking to cut the corner out of the sheet so that it doesn't stick out from underneath the door card when mounted. I'm also using it as a template to mark where the speaker will be mounted. Here once again I'm using the speaker mounting ring as the cut template, just tracing around it. Now it's simply a case of get a good sharp knife Cut the sound deadener off to the correct length and then cut out the speaker hole. Once you've cut out the speaker hole, be sure to retain this piece. I like to stick it in the door panel behind the speaker itself. And now that we've got one side cut, we can lay out more sound deadener. Lay down that sheet face down 
and use it as the template for the opposite side because both doors are symmetrical, just opposite. And once again, using your sharp knife, cut through the sound deadener, cut out the speaker hole. For this step you might find it useful to cut on an old MDF board or a piece of timber so that you don't ruin the blade of your knife. Here I'm installing the center part that we cut out behind the speaker mount. And I'm using a deep socket, usually used for installing spark plugs, to smooth down that sound deadener against the outer skin of the door. Now I'm installing the speaker deadener. And while you're installing your sound deadener, be mindful not to accidentally cover up any of the holes used to mount the door panel back onto the door frame. And here you can see that spark plug socket being used to push down the sound deadener against the frame. You will note that we're not using too much sound deadener on this door. The reason for this is I wanted to keep the weight down and also to show that you don't need to use a lot of sound deadener to have a good effect from using sound deadener. Here is a sheet being applied to the outer skin at the top of the door. And now we're going to attach the crossover network. As noted in previous videos, we have reused the factory wiring going into the door panel. Here I have attached the factory wires to the inputs on the crossover network. And I am installing a zip tie because we're going to zip tie the crossover network into place. And it's going to be attached to that factory loom right at that point where it's zip tied. Now I'm attaching the speaker wires going from the woofer outputs on the crossover network that will go into the 6 inch woofer that we're going to be installing in the doors in a moment. While you've got the crossover network apart, now would be a good time to verify the settings for your tweeter attenuator. I prefer to set my tweeter to a negative 2 or negative 3 dB attenuation or you can set it to 0. Some people like to set it to plus 3 and if you like to have your ears shredded go right ahead and do that. Here I've crimped on the spade connectors for the woofer and now I'm attaching the speaker cables for the tweeter. 
the Hertz tweeters that we're installing have a small lead soldered onto its terminals. So we're going to crimp this speaker wire to the speaker wire attached to the tweeter already. Now we just need to attach the face to the crossover network and then zip tie it into place. Once the factory dust film is put back into place, it will cover up the crossover network and hopefully there won't be any knocking. If you hear knocking from the crossover network against the door panel, you can just put some foam over the top of it to prevent that. Here the woofer is being connected to the woofer wire and it's being placed inside the mounting ring. Line up your first hole. and do up the first screw. Now please do be very careful during this step. It's easy to have that screwdriver slip and go right through the surround of your speaker. What I'm doing here is just starting the thread into the little mounting clips before torquing it down. We'll just be doing these up finger tight for now so that we've got some wiggle room then once all four screws have been installed the whole lot will be tightened down. Now we can crimp the tweeter to the speaker cables and as you can see the Hertz tweeter fits very nicely into the factory mounting position. Just make sure that you secure that tweeter in place using some hot melt glue and here I'm test fitting these are the two additional screws underneath the switch panel that I was talking about at the start of the video now that everything's tightened down all we need to do is reinstall the door card first connect up all the wires Pull through the cables for the switch panel and then remount the door handle. This is the sort of job that's a lot easier if you've got four hands. Here's the wiring for the switch panel coming through. Now the door cards usually will load in from the top. The top edge will snap down between the window and the door frame. And then once you've seated it, you can push it back and the clips will attach the card to the door frame. Now we can do up our two additional screws, do up the door handle, reattach the tweeter, and then reconnect that switch panel. Plug it in, snap it down, and then put in the mounting screw. Now we're going to be mounting the subwoofer. 
This is a Hertz compact subwoofer system. It uses an 8 inch driver with a 10 inch passive radiator and it comes with this handy mounting bracket. After checking the alignment on the back of the seat, I'm just going to use soft tapping screws and drive them right into the back of that seat frame. The back of the back seats is a solid plate of steel, so you can safely go ahead and run these screws straight in there. Now we cut off the subwoofer cable to the correct length, split it, strip it, and then attach it to the spring-loaded banana clips. One of the really nice features of this subwoofer system is you can install and remove it with no tools once you've got that mounting bracket installed. This is handy if you need your cargo space back. So now the speaker wires are connected. We just need to do up the two thumb screws that hold the subwoofer to that little mounting bracket. As I said, the beauty of the system is if you need to lay those back seats down flat, just undo those two thumb screws.